Hello folks, I hope that you're having just a great and safe and happy day today and keeping yourself safe in our modern COVID world today. Today I'm going to take a look at Katherine Kurtz and her Dorini Rising, um, which is the first book, it was published in 1970, it was the first book of a series. Um, I just finished it recently. Um, when I was uh, at my last job down in Mobile, Alabama at Spring Hill College, they had an on-campus um, uh, bookstore that was used um, for people that might be interested in things and books were donated and then the sales uh, of this and it was run up all by volunteers and the sales for this went uh, to help the, keep the college afloat. So it was used um, as sort of a, a, a non-profit way of keeping this non-profit institution afloat. So um, while I was there I came across the entire series of the Dorini Rising Chronicle by Katherine Kurtz and I picked it up for like five dollars. I figured it would be a fun read, and even even if I didn't want the whole series, at least it would be worth $5 for the first novel. And at some point in time over the next, I, I'd eventually read it, because this is an influential novel and an influential series. Uh, and we'll take a look at, at that a little bit later when I do my review for you, uh, uh, and do my sort of take on it. Um, but what this is, is it's historical fiction uh, in the fantasy genre. Um, it feels very historical, very little sh like a traditional fantasy novel, much more like a historical fantasy instead um, and so it has a sort of that modern fantasy trapping that you would have this is uh Catherine Kurtz is Lynn Carter's major uh sort of find while he was the editor for the Ballantine adult fantasy series I alluded to that when I did my re review for Carter in the case for Carter um uh where I made the argument that I think that Lynn Carter is the most influential writer um, I'm sorry, editor, in a, in a, in a, and he found the writer, Catherine Kurtz. I think that was probably his best find in the fantasy genre while he was editing the Ballantine adult fantasy series in the 60s and early 70s. So, um, and, I, and again, I made the case there that he was the most influential editor in, in the genre's history. Um, uh, I also think that, you know, he, this is an example of somebody that he found, brought to people, brought to the public masses um, in a very much a beloved way. So we'll take a look at uh, Dorini Rising. What's happening? I'll, I'll give you a quick synopsis and then I'll do my review for you. Uh, what's happening in this novel is, is that you are going to be setting up and in the first chapter. There's this very popular king who's in his 30s. Um, and just before his son turns of age, he is killed by, um, and you'll see in the first chapter who kills him, it's the shadow one. Um, it is the child of the person who was the main bad guy of a previous campaign. Uh, and she, the daughter, has inherited a lot of his power and so forth. And in order to get back against the people that had killed her father, she is going to kill um, the king, King Brian, um, she intends to take over the kingdom. Um, her next target is going to be uh, the young princeling, uh, Kelson, who has young, hasn't, hasn't inherited his power yet. Uh, he hasn't come of age yet, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, and then she's going to launch an attack on, on Kelson, take over the, uh, the, the, the kingdom, uh, which is one of the 11 kingdoms in this fantasy kingdom. Um, and then um, in order to do so, she's going to take out uh, Morgan, who is the general and um, for Brian and also for his son Kelson. Um, and he's also, both both of them are both members of a race called the, of non-humans that are called the Dorini, uh, which can inbreed with humans. Um, so they're half Dorini, half humans. Uh, the Dorini, uh, and I could be mispronouncing that. I'm, it could be Dorini or Darini or something like that. Who knows? I'm pronouncing it Dorini because that's what it looks like when I, when I look at it. Uh, but anyway, um, but the uh, they have magical abilities um, innately, uh, and if they're trained, they can learn how to use it. Now, this world reminds me a lot of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series by Tad Williams because in it there is a Christian church um, that exists, uh, and they have argued that Dorinis derive their magic from uh, the dark, uh, from from dark and evil, um, and so all Dorini are therefore innately evil. Uh, even though there have been good Dorini at times, and there is a good, and our, our General Morgan is a Dorini, he's half Dorini um, as well, and he's been protected by Brian. Uh, but now that Brian's out of the way, um, that has opened the gates for some political intrigue against our good, our, our good General Morgan. Um, and there's going to be a political intrigue, there's going to be a council meeting, there's going to be, uh, he is going to be brought up uh, charges of treason uh, and, um, and uh, sedition and so forth, uh, the punishment of which is death. So that's going to be the key sort of, um, is, is he going to die? What's going to happen? Kelson isn't old enough to defend him yet. He, isn't, he hasn't been named king. He's still the prince. Uh, and he's not of age either. So what's going to happen? He, he can't defend uh, Morgan. Uh, Morgan, uh, and so against the forces of, 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 of Charissa, she's the shadow one. 
as we're moving against him politically in this kingdom uh and her goal is essentially to take over the kingdom and take out kelson so this is both a a defense this this will be a coming of age story for kelson uh, who's going to be our major protagonist um as well as um morgan uh, kelson's confessor father duncan is also a key pl a player in the story too um so there you go that's the novel uh and a short little synopsis of it for you um now for my review thereof it, it was well written again it's very much a historical fantasy and when i say historical fantasy what i mean is is that the fantasy aspects aren't as much there but they're still there um your, your, main, your main bad guy is a sorceress. She kills somebody with magic. Um, there's a magic battle at the end of the month. There's going to be a magic battles. There's going to be magic creatures and so forth. Uh, but the key intrigues aren't battles or fights or anything like that. They're political. They're council meetings. Um, uh, they are antagonists who are just people that fight with swords rather than magic using people uh, and so forth. So there is magic in it, but it's, it's magic or it's, it's on the lighter side of magic. Uh, and again, this was the first sort of modern uh, historical fantasy novel that um, set a lot of the tropes for that because of how popular it was. And a lot of things that followed will take um, their um, number from this, 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 this novel and this series as it's really the first sort of major historical fantasy novel. So if you're interested in tracing the roots of historical fantasy and where that kind of sort of came from, that modern historical fantasy that you see in things like uh, 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 you know, George R. R. Martin uh, and other people who have a sort of fantasy light but heavy historical narrative, this is the place where you should go. Also, if you like things like the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series by Tad Williams, again, I, I saw that here too. Um, you might be interested in checking it out. Um, it was also well written. Um, there's a lot of things that happen. It, 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 it's, uh, it's also quick. It was only 270 pages long. So it was a quick little read. It did not take me a long time to read it. Just four days. Um, and I read like a half an hour for the first few days. And then like three hours the last day. <laughs> Which was yesterday on a Saturday. I'm recording this on Sunday. So I finished this in just a few days. But I didn't spend a lot of time really reading it. I was able to knock out basically a page a minute. Um, and knock it out in about three hours or so t total. Um, after I after, Probably more. That was more like four hours actually. Um, I got distracted sometimes by my phone or something. Um, but yeah, about, about four hours to knock out the novel. It's a very quick read. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I am going to pick up the, the sequel, which I have, um, which is um, Dorini Checkmate. Uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll knock out the first couple of chapters of it. If I like it, I'll continue the series. If not, I won't. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I give this novel an 8 out of 10, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm going to read the entire series, right? Um, but, uh, and right as of right now, I've got other books in my queue that I want to read by authors that I really like or, or things that I'm more in the mood for. Um, I wasn't in the mood for high fantasy, but I wanted to knock it out. I was, it was, it was next to my queue. Um, but I'm still kind of in that science fiction mode right now. So I'll probably go back out and knock out some more science fiction stuff for you. Um, but anyway. Um, I'll go ahead and leave you to it. There's Dorini Rising. Uh, what have you think about it? Have you read it? What did you think about my comments? Did you agree or disagree with any of them? I am happy to engage you further below. Um, if you like this video and this review, please feel encouraged to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be so many more of these to follow. And finally, I just want to thank, finally thank you for taking some time out of your day and watching my video. You know, we all have so many things that are calling us um, and so many different things that are, our time is just, you know, being fought over by so many different things in our lives. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling. And I really do appreciate that. Thanks again and have a great day.